six weeks of testimony. But I'll tell you what that tells me. That tells me that these jurors were listening. That tells me that these jurors were taking in the information that Creighton Waters, um, that all of the prosecution team, that John Metters, that Alan Wilson, what everybody was telling them, and they were processing it. And, and by the time they got to that room, it is clear they had their minds made up. I felt in watching this case every day for the last 28 days that the prosecution presented a strong case, be it circumstantial or direct evidence. Judge Clifton Newman today, before he sent the jury to deliberate, he said, I want you to know, oh, we've got action in court. Let's go ahead and look in now. Judge Clifton Newman walking back into the courtroom. I understand that there is a verdict. You may bring the jury. Thank you. Uh, Madam Foral Lady, if you'll stand for me. Uh, have you reached a verdict? Yes, yes, sir, we have. Is it unanimous? Yes, sir, it is. All right, if you will pass it up to the clerk who will pass it to me. And you may be seated. Then it will rise. Uh, Madam Clerk, you may publish the verdict starting with the back, not with the, let's see, I can tell you again. Starting with the back, flipping them over one by one. Docket number 2022 GS 15-00592, the State of South Carolina, County of Colleton, in the Court of General Sessions, in the term of 2022, July, the State versus Richard Alexander Murdoch Defendant, Indictment for Murder, SC Code 16-3-0010, CDR, Code 0116. Guilty verdict. Signed by the four lady 3223. Docket number 2022 GS 15 00593. The State of South Carolina, County of Colleton, in the Court of General Sessions. The July term of 2022, the state versus Richard Alexander Murdoch defendant, 
Indictment for Murder, SC Code 16-3-0010, CDR Code 0116, Verdict Guilty, signed by the Four Lady, Date 3-2 of 23. Docket number 2022-GS15-00595, the State of South Carolina, County of Colleton, Court of General Sessions, July term 2022, the State versus Richard Alexander Murdoch, defendant, indictment for possession of a weapon during the commission of a violent crime, SC Code-16-23-0490, CDR code 0549, verdict guilty, signed by the foreperson of the jury, date 3223. Docket number 2022 GS 15 00594, the State of South Carolina, County of Colleton, Court of General Sessions, July term 2022, the State versus Richard Alexander Murdoch, defendant. Indictment for possession of a weapon during the commission of a violent crime, SC Code 16-23-0490, CDR Code 0549, verdict guilty, signed by the foreperson of the jury, 3223. Thank you. Uh Madam Forelady and members of the jury, if that is the verdict of each and every juror, please let it be known by raising your right hands. All right, thank you. Any individual polling requested? We do, Your Honor. Right, Madam Clerk, you'll need to individually poll the ju jury according to their jury juror numbers. Number 193. Was this your verdict? Yes, sir. Is it still your verdict? Yes. Juror 22, two, I'm sorry, juror 254. Yes. Is this your verdict? Yes. Is it still your verdict? Yes. Juror 326. Was this your verdict? Yes. Is it still your verdict? Yes. Juror 6, juror 530. Was this your verdict? Yes. Is this your verdict? Yes. Juror 544. Was this your verdict? Yes. Is it still your verdict? Yes. Juror 572. Was this your verdict? Yes. Is it still your verdict? Yes. Juror 578. Was this your verdict? Yes. Is it still your verdict? Yes. Juror 589. Was this your verdict? Yes. Is it still your verdict? Yes. Juror 630. Was this your verdict? Yes. Is it still your verdict? Yes. Juror 729, was this your verdict? Yes. Is it still your verdict? Yes. Juror 826, was this your verdict? Yes. Is it still your verdict? Yes. Juror 864, was this your verdict? Yes. Is it still your verdict? Yes. Your Honor, the jury has been polled. Thank you. The jury has been polled and the verdict is a unanimous verdict. If you will bring the alternate juror out and have her uh, have a seat in the audience, please. You can stand there or you can sit back there, whatever you prefer. Okay. Are there any post trial motions? None from the state, Your Honor. Your Honor, we, we would just renew our previously um, uh, argued motions for a directed verdict. And at this, on, on the grounds, <clears throat> on those grounds, we would make a motion for a mistrial and to set aside the verdict. By the state response. Your Honor, based on our previous arguments, we would submit that the uh, case properly went to the jury and the verdict is proper and would rely on those arguments. Right, we've been here now 28 days, um, first few days of jury selection and the remainder 
receiving testimony, uh, a, an overwhelming amount of testimony and evidence that was presented to the jury for the jury's consideration. As I indicated to the jury during the jury charge, or the charge on the law, that this was a matter solely for jury, the jury to determine. Uh, the court found at the end of the state's case that there's sufficient evidence to find the defendant guilty if the evidence um, was believed by the jury. Uh, likewise, at the end of the, the uh, defense's case, when the motion was renewed, the court um, found that the evidence was sufficient for the jury to find the defendant guilty. The jury has now considered the evidence um, for a significant period of time, and um, the evidence of guilt is overwhelming and uh, I deny the motion. The, Mr. Murdoch, you now having been found guilty of two counts of murder involving your wife and your son, two counts of possession of a weapon during the commission of a violent crime, uh, the burden now comes upon the court to impose a sentence Given the lateness of the hour and the victim's rights that must be um, taken into consideration and complied with under the Victim's Bill of Rights and consider what I would anticipate to be a number of people who might have something to say regarding sentencing, uh, we will defer sentencing to a later date. Of course, the um, minimum sentence for murder is 30 years. The maximum sentence is life imprisonment as to each count. And the, on the weapons charge, the sentence is up to five years or five years, um, which has to be concurrent if a life sentence is imposed. When would you all like to uh, reconvene for sentencing? I would like to give everyone an adequate opportunity to prepare, prepare for it. State will be ready at 9.30 in the morning, Your Honor. We could do it at 9.30 tomorrow morning also. All right. The, um, Defendant is remanded to the custody of the um, Colleton County Sheriff's Department. And he may be taken away. Madam Fore Lady and members of the jury, I want to thank you on behalf of the citizens of the state of South Carolina and your fellow citizens of Colleton County. Uh, you did not volunteer for this service. You were uh, called upon by the, being summoned to appear and uh, Providence have brought you to this moment in time and these weeks in time. I know that all of you have been here at uh, great sacrifice, uh, particularly the um, juror whose job was on the line uh, until a miracle happened, I guess, that allowed him to be able to leave rather than, to stay at rather than leave after uh, two or three weeks. Um, but I wanna thank each one of you all individually and 
collectively. Uh, it's not often that you're called upon to uh, sit in judgment of the actions of your fellow man, but you all responded. And um, it gave due consideration to the evidence. Um, I will make no comment now as to the um, extent or the overwhelming nature of the evidence, uh, but certainly the verdict that you've reached is supported by the evidence, uh, um, circumstantial evidence, direct evidence, all of the evidence pointed to only one conclusion, that's the conclusion that you all reached. Uh, so I applaud you all for, um, as a group, uh, and as a unit, and individually, uh, evaluating the evidence and um, coming to a proper Conclusion as you see, as you saw the law, as you saw the facts. Um, now that you've served for the next year, you're not eligible to serve again. Now, of course, many people never get called upon, but you're not eligible for the next year. And for two additional years, uh, you can be exempted from service because no person is required to serve on jury duty in this court more often than once every three. Uh, years. Uh, tomorrow morning at 9.30 um, we will reconvene for sentencing. Uh, you all have no role in that because that's solely up to the judge, to me. Uh, you're welcome to come back if you want to and be a part of the audience uh, if you like. I also want to thank the alternate juror who was locked away in a room by herself for these hours. Um, who, um, who's hung in there during that period of time. I want to thank you as well. Um, Madam Clerk, what do you have to tell your jurors? Thank you for your service and what the judge said as well. And I think we can release them tonight. Bring them back in the morning. No, they're off duty. They're off jury duty. They they're can off jury duty. they can come you back can come if back they if like. like. And you don't have to if you don't want to. Um, typically, I've I've seen jurors uh, wanting to see the end result of a case once they've invested a lot into it. It's really an amazing thing uh, with juries. Uh, quite often, at the start of the case, jurors are really like, whoa, why am I here? I wish I wasn't selected. But as time passes and the jurors, jurors become invested and really committed to the case and committed to seeing it through um, and are very disappointed when they are not able to see it to a conclusion. And then along the way um, of serving, you end up finding out quite a bit about our judicial system uh, and learning quite a bit, uh, well, about human nature for sure, uh, but also uh, about the presentation of evidence and hearing from expert witnesses and really learning a lot of things that uh, you'll be able to take with you when you leave jury duty. And to Madam Forlady, uh, I don't know if you were hesitant initially or not, but you have stepped up to the plate and done a great job of uh, leading the jury as well. And thank all of you. So the jury is dismissed. If Now, one thing before you go, of course, um, we have <clears throat> invested a lot in maintaining the privacy of, of the jury of each one of you. And um, you are free at this point to discuss the case with anyone. Uh, given the high profile nature of the case, I'm certain that the uh, many people in the media would like, will probably want to uh, communicate with you, but they have no means of contacting you because under order that I issued, the identity of the jurors must be kept 
private. And if um, you decide that you want to speak with anyone, local, state, nationally, or internationally, uh, that's your prerogative. However, should anyone harass you, please let me know and I will address those issues. Uh, if anyone through the uh, somehow or another discover your identity and, and harass you, uh, and rest assured I will intercede on your behalf. That having been said, uh, you are free to communicate with whomever you might want to concerning the case from now on. And so with that, thank you, and you all are free to go. Yes. If I could have you go to the bureau, and I'm going to meet you back there for just a few minutes. All right. And, and it, as is my practice, I'll speak with the four person before you leave the building after talking to them back there. It took a little more than three hours for the jury to come back with the verdict of guilty on both charges of murder for disgraced former South Carolina attorney Alec Murdoch. This case has lasted 28 days. They've had more than 70 witnesses, more than 800 pieces of evidence. But again, in a little more than three hours, jurors believed that they had heard what they needed to hear in order to convict Alec Murdoch of murder in the death of his wife, Maggie, and his son, Paul. We have team coverage in Collinson County right outside of the courthouse. We're going to begin now with Andrea Mock. 